In this video, we're going to dive into the note-making app Obsidian as if we are a complete beginner. Hi, I'm Nick Milo and welcome to Linking Your Thinking, where we talk about the how and why of making meaningful notes. Let's get started. Okay, let's start by downloading Obsidian. Go to Safari, type in obsidian.md, and just download the latest version. Allow that to download. Close this. Once it's done, open it up and simply drag it into applications. So I've already done that and I've put it into my dock here. So let's open it up first time. It should look like this for you. And it's saying open folder as vault. Create a new vault. What's a vault? A vault is simply a folder that Obsidian is looking at for its files. So let's create a new vault and let's just call it uh, a folder and browsing location let's put that folder on the desktop and let's create it here it is so what we see is it's just it's right here that's all it is a simple folder okay so this is obsidian we're in this is what it looks like a little intimidating i want you just to focus on this button new note that's the most important note right now so let's click on that Gonna blow it up a little bit. Right away, it allows us to change the title up here. Let's call this guy Note Star. Our very first note, I hit tab, puts my cursor here, and I'm just going to say, hi, I'm a new note. That's all. Note Star is just saying I'm a new note. So what we want to see here is that if we go back to the desktop in this folder, this is Note Star, that's it. It's a .md file. Markdown, which is the same as a plain text file that you can open up with text edit, which is on any Mac in the world. It's plain text is a type of format that as long as there are computers, there will be computers that can read plain text. And that's what we mean by a different term, future proofing, that we'll get to later. Now going back to Obsidian, we've made a note, but what happens when we want to make a second note? Remember this, new note, new note, okay. And let's call this one never note. No one likes me. They only like. This is the first magical moment in a software that can make links. I'm going to hit bracket bracket, which pulls up a list of all my notes. And I'm going to select note star. They only like NoteStar. Now if I do a click on NoteStar, it takes me back to that original note. That is a huge, huge game changer. I mean, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps here because once we start linking our thinking, it opens up a whole new avenue of thinking. Honestly, it kind of reopens up the avenue of how our brains actually work. So we're kind of getting closer to what feels natural. But let's, let's use like a real situation on this. Imagine you have a favorite movie. We all have our favorite movies. For me, one of my favorite movies is The Matrix. It comes up all the time in conversations. I'm thinking about the red pill and the blue pill and choices. So why not kind of externalize that in this piece of software? So let's go back to New Note. And I'm just going to say The Matrix. And I have pre-written one sentence. So... First off, what am I trying to do here? I'm not trying to make a, a critique of the movie. I could, I absolutely could, but for my purposes, what I like are the ideas, the concepts that I, that I glean from different sources, such as movies like The Matrix. And Morpheus presents Neo with this choice, the infamous red pill, blue pill. And so what I'm going to do is just highlight this. I'm actually just going to hit the bracket and then bracket button again. And so I've created a potential new note. Now, once I click on it, now it's a new note over here. Here it is, right? That's pretty cool. That's really powerful. That's awesome. Um, so what's so cool about red pill, blue pill? Well, it's really about choices and the willingness to, to have one's beliefs challenged. And, you know, the more I thought about this concept, I threw in a second sentence, which is perhaps it's so difficult to take the red pill 
because we lose that sense of control, right? And sense of control is definitely something that's integral to a lot of my thinking about when I, you know, feel in charge of what I'm trying to accomplish and other times when I feel like chaos is taking over. So I know that's a note in the future that I'll want to create. But here's the thing, right now I can just add these brackets and it won't create the new note until I click on it. So it's just kind of a placeholder. It's a reminder for myself. Here's the other thing though. This reminds me of something. So I might type here related and uh, let's call this adversity paradox. Cool. Now let's click on it to create the new note, adversity paradox. And so the adversity paradox is this crazy idea that we're never really seeking out adversity in our lives, but when we find it, we tend to grow from it. So it's the idea that we get stronger from the stressors in our lives. I mean, that's pretty fascinating to me. So I'm thinking about this idea. And it makes me think immediately to a book that I had to read in high school and I fell in love with actually. It was by Viktor Frankl and it was Man's Search for Meaning. And he makes the argument, he's a Holocaust survivor. He was. And he makes the argument that it's not sex that brings us meaning, like Freud would say. It's not power that brings us meaning, like Adler said. It's suffering that brings us meaning. Now, like, nowhere... In the adversity paradox is the the concept of Viktor Frankl. But because of how our brains work from our own personal experiences, in this case mine, I was able to make this connection. And to me, this is really powerful. And this is the power of linking your thinking is because you can create these thoughts over time and they start to grow and build, which we'll get into more. So I'm just going to make the Viktor Frankl note. I'm not going to touch it right now. And I'm going to go back to the adversity paradox. Um, what else, what else, what else? Hmm, maybe never note could learn a thing or two from this concept. All right, so now we tied never note back into this. And this takes us to the next really cool aspect of linking your thinking, which is Backlinks, also known as linked mentions. So right now, check this out. We're in this note called Adversity Paradox, and it has a linked mention to Red Pill, Blue Pill. Let's click back to that. Now, what does that mean? On Red Pill, Blue Pill, it links to the Adversity Paradox. So going back to the Adversity Paradox, here's the linked mention, right? Now that we're at Red Pill, Blue Pill, we have that the matrix links to it, right? And we can even read in context that it says Morpheus presents Neo with a choice. So we can click on that and now we're back to the matrix note. So that's how these linked mentions work. And it's a great way as you look at one note to see all of the different connections that you've made, which takes us to the last point, the last part of this demo, which is the graph view. Now check this out. This is pretty cool. This is what we made in the program today. We started with NoteStar. Basically, Nevernote didn't like NoteStar and was, was jealous of NoteStar. And so when we linked the two, we formed a new relationship. And now these two notes are linked and we can, we can build context through that link. And then Nevernote, well, we didn't go in this order, but now it's connected to the adversity paradox, which is connected to Viktor Frankl. Adversity paradox is also connected to red pill, blue pill which is connected to the matrix. So in this way, we have created all sorts of contextual goodness. So let's take a step back. In a short amount of time, we've made all sorts of new connections. We've externalized them in a program like Obsidian and we've started to grow them and cultivate them. And the magic is, let's go back in because let's say a year passes and I get back to this red pill, blue pill, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, this reminds me of something that just happened yesterday to me. And I, and I write this in. This reminds me of something that just happened, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so do we see what's happening here? This note doesn't lose its value over time. Its value actually 
grows in time as I have more experiences and I externalize those experiences. The connections grow. Now, why is this important? First and foremost, when you link your thinking, you improve your ability to recall those memories, those, those thoughts, those ideas. And that's the most important thing. We want to be able to have confidence that we can find what we're looking for when we want to find it. That is first and foremost. And when we link, we have a better chance of remembering. Secondly, it allows us to build things as we're seeing here. So we might not start with the perfect uh, Michelangelo sculpted out of, of marble, but we can get there slowly over time, right? And that's just through our own experiences that we're adding value to our existing collection of thoughts. But practically, you might be thinking, why is this important? Well, it depends. I mean, if you're somebody who is a creator, this is the perfect way to create a new article or make a new speech because you've already done 80% of the work. Now it's just crafting it and honing it for whatever particular medium that you hope to deploy it in. But I find that a lot of value just comes from having conversations with other people. And, and having this in the back of my mind, I'm making all sorts of leaps of insights across genres and domains. And I, I, it just makes every conversation that you enter that much more interesting and fun and engaging. Because now when you're listening, you're more actively engaged because you're trying to, you know, understand whatever that person is saying in, in some other concepts that you've taken some time to really flesh out. And this is where newness and novelty comes from. And that's going to wrap up our first video on the basics of Obsidian. We didn't just cover the how, but we really dove into the why. And I hope you can start to see why this is so exciting. Hey, if you like this video, it's the first in a series of videos on covering the note making app Obsidian as if you are a complete beginner. If you liked it, please subscribe below because there will be many more. If you liked it also, hey, give it a thumbs up, make a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer. I'm just so thankful that you watched and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.